The country of Ecuador boasts natural wonders beyond imagination. The Galapagos Islands, the Andes Mountains, the Amazon. But oil exploitation over the past three decades has led to what could be the largest environmental lawsuit in history. The suit claims there has been significant damage to Ecuador's natural resources and its people. You're talking about an area roughly the size of the state of Rhode Island where the ecosystem is contaminated, meaning you can't get clean water from natural water sources. The air is polluted and people are exposed either by breathing or eating food or drinking water to poison. And there's no way they can escape. What we are seeing here is one of almost a thousand pits that Texaco just left here in the northern region of the Ecuadorian Amazon. It contains tons of contaminated waste and oil residue that has been here for more than 20 years. The damage that Texaco has done is not limited to this pit. It covers an enormous amount of land that the water continues to contaminate to this day. The pipe coming out of this pit is 30 years old and is rusted, so the water continues to seep out. And as you can see, it's not only water, it's oil. All of this waste continues to traverse the streams and the rivers in this area. 30,000 plaintiffs have filed a lawsuit against Chevron and have placed their faith squarely on the shoulders of Pablo Fajardo and Luis Janssen. Hola. Luis has led the massive community outreach program for 14 years, traveling to remote regions to gather data and to keep the plaintiffs informed of their progress. Pablo, at age 35, is the lead attorney against the formidable adversary. In 2001, Chevron Oil acquired Texaco, the company that began these practices 30 years ago. Chevron, the lawsuit alleges, is responsible for the cleanup of the toxic waste and for restoring the health and safety of the people of the region. We have been fighting for the community for 13 years to restore the quality of the water and the environment so that these families can regain their health and live with dignity. Before Texaco, there were many animals, including monkeys and iguanas, and we could catch 50 fish in a day. Now we only catch two or three. Both the tests taken by the oil companies and the tests taken by the plaintiffs show oil residue. All have toxic substances that put the community at risk. Since the oil companies came, there has been contamination that has led to many deaths from strange diseases like cancer. My wife developed uterine cancer after our fourth child was born. Then two of our children died of cancer. Many members of our family and village have also died. Some tribes have completely disappeared. We can never recover these tribes or the lives of people who have died of cancer. In this toxic atmosphere, with potentially billions of dollars at stake, there is a constant sense of peril for those involved in the case. Both Pablo and Luis have had to make a lot of personal sacrifices. There have been threats to them during this process. There have been robberies of law offices. There are interests in this country that do not want us to succeed and I think will do almost anything to stop us. This has been an extremely long and difficult case and for our people, this means life itself. Because Pablo and Luis are from here, we know we can trust them completely. I think for both Pablo and Luis, this case is the only mechanism people have in the region to have any chance of saving their lives, saving the rainforest on which they depend. So the level of commitment is forever. And that's really due largely to the extraordinary leadership of Pablo and Luis. Our outstanding environmental achievement in South and Central America, the 2008 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Pablo Fajardo and Luis Llanza, Quito, Ecuador. <laughs>